जाए गोबडाम पूजा की जाए महा महोत्सव की जाए सो वो गो राइट इन टू द क्लास एंड वो डू द अब्रिविएटेड मंगल चरण ओम अज्ञान तिमिरंदस्य गिनार्जन सलकय चक्षु उन्मीलितम येना तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोबिस्तम स्थापितम येन बुतले स्वयं रूपा कदम मयम ददाति स्वापदंतिकम वन्दे हम शिगुरो शियुता पदकमलम शिगुरुं वैष्णवं च श्री रूपं साग्रजातं सहगनाथ रागनाथं वितं तं सजीवं साद्वैतं सर्वदूतं परिजना सहितं कृष्ण चैतन्य देवं श्री राधा कृष्ण पदम सहगना लालिता श्री विशाखं वितं च हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरे विश्वान सुति देवी प्राणमामि हरि प्रिय पंचकल्प थिरुवेश्च कृपा सिंधु भय बचा पतिथानम भावने भ्यो वैष्णवे भ्यो नमो नमः नमः ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण प्रस्थाय पुतले श्रीमाक्ति भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी तीनामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदे सुथारिणे श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्री वासरी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमस्ते गिरिराजाय गोवर्धनधारी नामिने अशेष क्लेश नाशय परमानंद दायिने सो टुडे वी विल ट्राई टू मेक ए attempt to speak a little bit about this most important pastime we might say that of all of krishna's pastimes this is one of the most important and prominent pastime it reigns supreme amongst his leelas because what it shows as far as krishna's mercy upon his devotees and the exclusive principle of worshiping him aside from or without any other deity so in other words he established by this particular pastime exclusive worship to himself as the only goal of worship i'll give a little bit of a narration of the pastime please excuse me if i leave out some details because it is so voluminous in fact uh, um his holy nishiva ram maharaj in his uh written uh, account of this particular pastime takes up 200 pages and that's just a part of the and there's so many more details to the pastime but we'll try to hit on the essence krishna before his descent into this world as shri krishna in Sri Vrindavan 5100 years ago said to Radharani Radharani I'm going to the material world to perform my pastimes get ready to come she said I'm not coming unless Govardhan and Jamuna also come Krishna said they have already left <laughs> so then of course Radharani had no argument after that <laughs> So it is explained that actually what is Govardhan who is Govardhan what is the spiritual essence of Govardhan aside from his leelas in the material world he's actually a manifestation of the love for Krishna for Shrimati Radharani which is an expression of Krishna's innermost heart of deep love for Radharani he manifested that mountain as an expression of his love for her So that mountain of course is is eternal but it appears in this world to to assist Krishna's pastimes. It explains that this mountain appeared 
in the area of the Himalayas with one person, neighbor, his name was Dronachala. And uh, Govardhan became his son. <laughs> Although he was a mountain, still he was also a son, <laughs> as is described. And uh, he was a beautiful boy, and of course very obedient and very, very powerful personality. Dronachala, his only son, loved Giri more than anything. It all happened one personality, one great personality, one of the sons of Lord Brahma, Pulashya Muni, was traveling in the area and he happened to stop at the ashram of Dronachala. After seeing Govardhan, he became, his heart became immediately attracted and he was thinking Govardhan would be perfect to assist me in my puja. So immediately, being a sage and Usually sages get what they want. <laughs> he approached John Achala and asked for Govardhan. Of course, Go, uh, John Achala was shocked, but at the same time he understood that if I don't agree, then my whole life will be cursed and I will, everything will be inauspicious for refusing a great soul his request. So reluctantly, he agreed. And then he told Govardhan. And Govardhan said to Pulashya Muni, I will go, but I have a condition, and that is that if you put me down anywhere, I will fly above your head, and you may hold me up with your mystic power, but if you put me down anywhere, that's where I stay. So that was agreed upon, because Pulashya Muni didn't have any plans to put him down. He was on his way to Kashi, Banaris. And so, as they were flying, they happened to pass the area of Vrindavan. And then Giri understood that Krishna will be appearing very soon, and I am there for to assist him in his pastimes. So he started to uh, expand himself in weight. He became so heavy that uh, Pulastamuni couldn't hold him. Sometimes they also say that he created an urge in Pulasta Muni to respond to nature. <laughs> but in any case, he put down Govardhan. And then after returning quickly, he tried to pick up Govardhan, but Govardhan wouldn't move. He says, why are you not coming? He said, this was the agreement. Wherever you put me down, I stay. See, therefore I curse you. Now, Govardhan was... 60 miles high, 14 miles long, and I can't remember the width, but it's also so many miles, <laughs> I think 30-some miles in width. That was the original size of Govardhan as he appeared in this material world. And so, Balastin Muni said, All right, therefore I curse you that every day you will sink one the size of one mustard seed into the earth. And we can see after thousands of years later, Govardhan is not the same height. He's not the same in size in any way. And actually, this was a benediction at the same time appearing to be a curse. And what was that benediction? That when Krishna would leave the planet, Govardhan and Jamuna would feel great separation. So Govardhan is gradually leaving the world through the curse of Pulastya Muni and Jamuna is also gradually drying up. So these are actually plans by the Lord to bring them back to the spiritual world. The scene switches now to Vrindavan and we have the cowherd men headed by Nanda Maharaj. And every year at this particular time, they perform an Indra Yagya. And the purpose of the Indra Yagya is to satisfy Lord Indra. And they're now they're getting all the paraphernalia ready for the Yagya. And Krishna, now he's, he's seven and a half years old at the time. That's his age. He's not like a seven and a half year old boy we know, because it says in the Shastras that for every year he grows, he grows a year and a half according to normal standards. So you might say, if he's seven and a half, he's about 11. 
as, as a normal size child would be for 11, but he'd be seven and a half. So he's seven and a half and he sees hmm, his father and all the cowherd men uh, running around gathering various types of paraphernalia. He questions his father, what are you doing? What is this, what is this puja you are about to perform? What is the purpose? What is the goal? Is it some tradition? Is it some ritual? And uh, Nanda Maharaj tries to explain that yes, we are cowherds and therefore we are agriculturalists and therefore we require rain. And therefore this is in, to satisfy Lord Drindra, so we will have whatever rain we need for our crops. And Krishna is not really happy with that argument <laughs> or that explanation. So Krishna says, well, that's very nice, but actually, um, you know, rain comes anyway. <laughs> and it not only comes in the agricultural fields, but it comes in places where it's not needed, on the rocks, on the, on the oceans, on the rivers, like that. And at the same time, you just do your duty. That's all. Just do your duty. Do your duty very nicely, and therefore... Even if there's a God, God is saying even if there's a God, <laughs> he's speaking the type of philosophy which is called karma mimansa, which is somewhat of an agnostic philosophy. Even if there is a God, that's fine. But still, if you do your duty very nicely, you will get the results. So learn your duty, perform it nicely, and you'll always get the results. What is the need to worship any deva? <laughs> and even if there is a God, still... He's supplying rain all the time, so there's no need for all. In other words, Krishna was using various arguments to dissuade Nanda Maharaj to go ahead with this puja. Finally, he says, of course, there's a whole dialogue that goes on, and I'm leaving much of it out. Finally, he said, you know, actually, what is our, what is our worth? What is our value? What is our blessings? We have Govardhan. He provides nice caves, grass for our cows fruit trees and there's so many vegetables and it's shade so many th wonderful things provided by Govardhan and then we have the cows we should actually worship the cows in Govardhan let us forget about this Indra Puja and use our time and paraphernalia and, and resources to honor the cows in Govardhan so Krishna he's very convincing when he speaks <laughs> to say the least and so Nanda Maharaj consults with the other cowherd men and they, they agree. What Krishna says is true. Yes, we get so much mercy, so much benediction from Govardhan and from the cows, let us worship them. So they perform. So then they decide how to worship. So then it is understood, let's, perform, let's cook a big feast and offer it to the cows to the Brahmanas and to Govardhan Hill. So a big feast is planned in, in the Srimad Bhagavatam and also nicely explained in the Krishna book. There is a very long list of preparations. I think there's 25 mentioned. Something like, I can only remember a few of them, rice, uh, pakoras, I don't know if there's chapatis were there, but <laughs> dal was there, and then there was uh, halva, rubri, sweet rice, and so many nice preparations. The list goes on and on. If you read the list, you get hungry. <laughs> so then the. Uh, Residents of Vrindavan, they're assembling all their goods, their milk products, their otter, everything. And they're cooking, cooking, cooking. And they cook this gigantic feast, exhausting all their boga. And now it is understood they have to offer it to Govardhan and to the cows. And the Brahmins would be the first to honor. So they take all the preparations and pile it all over around Govardhan Hill. And then, after doing that, keeping the cows and the Brahmins in front, they circumambulate Govardhan Hill. And they sing this beautiful song, which we'll sing at the end. 
That's, uh, we're not going to sing it, we're going to listen to it be sung, because I think we might find it a little hard to follow. But anyway, it's only for about three minutes, the song is so nice. But this is the song that they sang when they were, and this is from Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu, when they were circumambulating Govardhan Hill. So then Govardhan manifested himself, but actually what happened, Krishna became Govardhan Hill. He expanded himself into Govardhan Hill and became the hill itself and started to accept all the preparations. So one after another, Krishna, in the form of Govardhan, was eating everything, and it was all disappearing. <laughs> everything. They had made mountains of rice and lakes of sweet rice and so many other sumptuous and succulent preparations. And, and everything was being eaten. Finally, everything was gone, and there was nothing left. And then Govardhan in his huge form, responded, Anior, Anior, give me more. <laughs> there was no more. Anior, what to do? Everyone was confused. Everyone could hear the request from Govardhan, give me more, give me more. There was no more. What to do? But then there was one Brahmin. It's always good to have Brahmins for programs. They know what to do. <laughs> the one Brahmin said, Give him a Tulsi leaf. <laughs> All right, so they someone brought some Tulsi and they offered it to Govardhan, and Govardhan was satisfied. So this is very essential principle that's being brought out by this pastime is that when we offer boga to the Vishnu deities of the Lord, in other words, to Radha and Krishna and to Jagannath like that, to even Sri Sri Gauranyatai, uh, the Lord likes to see, and sometimes they say he won't accept unless there is Tulsis on the preparations. Tulsi is very dear to the Lord. So that was one message that this particular pastime happened. And then after circumambling Govardhan Hill, then what the hill did, after being pleased with everyone's worship and having a nice feast, Krishna in the form of Govardhan gave all the, everything back in the form of Prashad. It all reappeared at the, at the base of Govardhan Hill. And everyone was so happy. And then, everyone, then they began to honor the brahmanas by feeding the brahmanas and feeding the children. But then we forget about one thing. Indra, one personality, he wasn't so happy with the program because he was excluded and he wanted to be the program. And so he was a little angry, not a little, he was really angry. From his heavenly abode, he was looking down and saying, what are these cowherd people doing? They're forgetting their worship of me, which is most essential. Now they're worshiping just because this talkative boy, <laughs> that's what he said, this talkative boy has somehow or other convinced them to, to, to uh, have a feast and honor this hill. Now my worship is not being performed. Therefore, this is intolerable. So he's a little proud. What do you say? Yeah? You agree? Anybody? He's a little proud. I'm not little. <laughs> so he decides to, to react but his reaction is not really comparable to the situation. He overreacts. He thinks, I'm going to, they should be destroyed. So he calls the most powerful rain clouds, which are called the Samantaka clouds, which are used only at the devastation of the universe. These are very powerful clouds, dark, very fierce, with strong uh, winds accompanying them, and torrential rains which come down in pillars. So they appear in their personal form to Indra, and Indra in a very angry mood, but a very demanding one also, says, go and inundate Vrindavan. <clears throat> so immediately they leave, and they start pouring their waters on Vrindavan. 
Now, after some time, everybody's realizing things are changing. And so the area is getting filled up with water and everyone is starting feeling the cold with the, with the winds and the, and the rain coming. And so the devotees, residents of Vrindavan, Krishna's dear intimate associates, they're feeling lost. So finally, as it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam, they say, Krishna! 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 Mahabhaga! Krishna, Krishna, Mahabhaga! Please save us from Indra and all the rains! Krishna comes out and he, he runs immediately towards Govardhan Hill, but he doesn't get wet. Although it's pouring rain, because Ananta Shays is immediately there to give a little umbrella. <laughs> and then Krishna makes it, and he goes right to the hill, and with one hand he picks up the hill, holds it over his head, and then balances the entire hill on the pinky of his left hand, the smallest and most weakest of all fingers by our calculations, <laughs> of the pinky. And uh, he holds it up. And now he, he's signaling to all the residents, please come, take shelter, come under Govardhan. Govardhan is our protection. So bringing the cows, they all come, all the residents of Vrindavan, and they start to huddle underneath the hill. This hill is huge, and Krishna's holding it over his head, and the rains are coming. And then you might be wondering, what's happening to the ground? Is the ground turning into a, a massive flood? But Krishna has who with him? What's his favorite weapon? Sudarshan Chakra! Hiva! Om Namo Bhagavate Sudarshanaya Diptre Paritanaya Saru Dikshobanaya Haraya Hamfat! Brahmane Paramam Jyoti Se. That, that's the mantra for worshiping. <laughs> it's good to worship the weapons too because you, <laughs> you don't know when you'll ever, you might need some mercy. <laughs> so Sudarshan, he doesn't have, Krishna doesn't have to worry. Sudarshan knows what to do. <laughs> so all the, all the ground becomes completely dry by the heat of Sudarshan. And he keeps working as the brains keep coming. So there's no, so everything is dry underneath the mountain. And the rains are coming. And torrential rains inundating the mountain and inundating with, with thunderbolts, huge, powerful thunderbolts striking the mountain. But you know, as it's explained by the, by the uh, chariots, although that mountain was being bombarded by Indra's powers, it was feeling nothing. In fact, Indra couldn't move one leaf off the mountain <laughs> because Krishna's hand was touching the mountain and the mountain was feeling ecstasy. <laughs> he was feeling completely satisfied and happy just being held by Krishna. And therefore, although everything was being pounded on him, it was like it never happened. Jai Sisi Pancha Tattva Ki Jai. Huh? Yeah, everybody was. Of course, they were a little bewildered. How is this, you know, little boy holding up this big hill? So the cowherd men thought, I think we, he needs some assistance. So they took their sticks and put it up over their head and put it under the base of Govardhan to help Krishna hold up the hill. Now Krishna was looking at them like, what are they doing? <laughs> they think they're doing something. So I better teach them a little message in a form of a lesson. So he starts to take a little bit of his shakti away from the hill and the hill starts coming down. <laughs> and the cowherd men are starting, whoa! And then Krishna puts it back up, <laughs> just to let them know you're not doing anything, <laughs> but I appreciate it. <laughs> so for seven full days and seven full nights, Krishna gave his darshan in the form of Giriraj by holding up this hill with his pinky. And he was able to fulfill the desires of all the residents of Vrindavan. 
Mother Yasoda, of course she was shocked to see her son in that position, and she was thinking he needs some food because it really must be hard to hold up that hill. So I have to feed him. So she was cooking and making sure Krishna had everything he needed. And the gopis, especially the young gopis who had never seen Krishna, this is a nice point that's being made here, there was a group of gopis who had never seen Krishna, but they heard about Krishna. So they were they had developed their love for Krishna without seeing Krishna. And that's described as purvaras. Purvaras means loving Krishna before seeing Krishna. And sometimes the acharyas, at least the shastras, apply that to us here in the material world. Apparently we were with Krishna, that's it's the understanding, we came from the spiritual world and somehow we are here. But it's so far removed from our experience and from our memories that it's not possible to recall it or even to, under, to even imagine it. So our relationship with Krishna now is about hearing about Krishna and developing our love for Krishna through the process of Shravanam Kirtanam. And therefore, it is synonymous with the principle of Purva Ras, loving Krishna before meeting Krishna, like that. So these gopis, who had never seen Krishna, who were just really young girls, they were younger than most of the gopis, were fulfilling their desires completely and, and perfectly by just looking at the beautiful form of Krishna for seven full days. And nobody slept. Everybody remained awake for seven full days including Indra. <laughs> and so this went on, and of course, at one time, there's a little, little, uh, what's the word? A little side point here. that Krishna started looking at the breast of one of the gopis, and then his fingers started to shake a little bit. <laughs> so Balaram noticed it, and Krishna felt embarrassed because he got caught by Balaram looking at one of the gopis' breasts. <laughs> Prabhupada said, Krishna is a lusty boy. <laughs> he said, where do you get it from? But of course, what he's doing it in the perfection of spiritual ras, which has no material inebriates. In other words, it's perfect, uh, transcendental, and the highest form of morality. It cannot be compared to the... You know, the attempts in this material world to imitate the Lord in performing these same types of activities. Now, ours are always full with Kama, Krodha, Lopa, Matsarya, Mada, and so many other good things. Baya. So, yeah, so Krishna was performing some of his sweet leelas as he was. And. There was kirtan, there was there was prashadam. It was like a festival for seven days. And Krishna was just giving everybody his as much mercy as possible. So one of the points which I will make now is that this Govardhan Leela shows that in our life, in everybody's life, there is always storms. <laughs> there is always difficulties. There are always reverses in our ways of thinking or the ways that the way the waves of providence push us in different directions, uh, unbeknownst to us and unliked by us. So we find ourselves many times under the influence of difficulties, emotional, physical, even sometimes spiritual crisis, health crisis, so many things. So what this pastime says, just follow in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan. When there was nothing else, they couldn't find any way to take shelter from this inundation by Indra. They just called out to Krishna. And soon as you, soon, and this applies to all of us, as soon as we sincerely call out to Krishna for his mercy and for his shelter, everything changes. <laughs> and Krishna is always there to give solace, direction, peace, and intelligence to his devotees. So whatever situation we find ourselves in, when we call out to Krishna, the solution always comes in one form or another. Either the situation goes away, 
where we understand how to deal with the situation in such a way that we become uh, free from the effects of the negativity that's being forced upon us. And there's so many examples. So, of course, now Indra's getting tired. Nothing's happening. <laughs> the clouds are worn out. Finally, they came back to Indra. They said, we're finished. <laughs> we're tired. We can't do anything. This boy who's ever holding out, he's must be a, he must be either God or some power, very powerful deva. <laughs> So finally, Indra goes to inspect the situation, and he starts to realize maybe this is not, maybe this is my worshipful Lord Sri Krishna. And so then he he understands that actually, uh oh, I think I made a mistake. Not only a mistake, I committed a big offense. Then he realizes within his heart, not only did I commit a big offense, I committed a terrible offense. So now he's thinking what to do. So he goes to Lord Brahma and tells him the situation. Brahma says, you're in trouble. <laughs> he doesn't give him any consolation. You're messed up. That's, that's the Supreme Lord. You tried to kill his, his intimate associates and destroy the whole land that they live in. You're in trouble. But Brahma comes up with a solution. Krishna is very fond of cows. He loves cows. So go to the best of all cows, Surabi, and arrange for Surabi to come and bring Surabi and then offer to offer an Abhishek to Krishna. Of course, I might be missing a few details just before that. And of course, Krishna is somewhat charmed by Surabi as she comes on behalf of Indra. And then she offers her Abhishek, and that Abhishek turns into one of the major bathing places in the area of Govardhan Hill. It's Govinda Kund, because he was in his mood as Govinda, as he was been bathed by the beautiful Sarabi cow. Of course, the pastime goes on, but there, I just wanted to sum it up with a few lessons from this pastime. Um, of course, Krishna eventually forgave Indra, but not before Indra complete, became completely f uh, repentant for what he did. Sometimes when we do something to someone, or we offend them, we cause them some difficulty, we're thinking, oh, I made a mistake. But then we think, I'm going to suffer because I did that. But that's not, that's not repentance. Repentance means to actually feel sorry for the difficulties you cause that other person. And Indra had to show that. And it wasn't until he actually did, and this is, this is brought out in, in Shiva Ram Maharaj's narration of this pastime. Well, Indra was trying to apologize to Krishna, Krishna just kept walking. <laughs> he wasn't even listening. <laughs> Finally, Indra realized that I have to express this in a different way or in the real way that I should express. And he came to his realization by Krishna's mercy that he, he expressed that I, 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 I tried to kill your associates and it caused you so much difficulty. I'm such, and then he started to condemn himself in so many different ways. And he was speaking from the heart. You can speak from the mind, but that is not enough. We have to, devotional life means speak, coming from the heart. So when, when he came from the heart, Krishna understood, yes. And Krishna is very merciful, so he forgave him. But he also established that in this particular pastimes, it's not necessary to worship other devas. Just like this time period we're in, Two weeks before Govardhan Hill, those of you who were born in India or have know the Indian culture, so many pujas, right? There's Lakshmi puja, there's Ganesh puja, there's puja to your brother, puja to your sister, puja to your uncle. <laughs> so many pujas, right? This puja, for two weeks it goes on. And then Diwali ends it all, and then the next day is Govardhan puja. So Krishna lit showed by this pastime, forget about all these pujas, just do, engage in devotional service to me. As he says in the Bhagavad Gita, 
that whatever benedictions can be bestowed upon the living entities is given by me alone. Those who worship the demigods, their intelligence is, is what does he call it? Alpamata is a very meager, no, no, no intelligence. You know. In other words, brainless. <laughs> to put it in a very, you know, gross. So he wanted to establish this principle through this practice. That's why Govardhan Puja appears right at the end of all of these these pujas that people do, and for various devas like that. Uh, what else did he want to establish? Let's see, I got is it? the importance of using tulsi leaves <laughs> and the importance of, of cooking and distributing prasadam, which is a very big part. I'm sure you have like mountains of rice cooked and lakes of sweet <laughs> rice. <laughs> <laughs> The water's cut off, it's only sweet rice. <laughs> okay, and to establish worship of Govardhan, he also performed this passion. To smash Indra's pride, of course we mentioned to establish, and to glorify and show the importance of cows, Brahmins, and Govardhan, like that. So these are some of the, uh, and to show the super excellent devotion of the residents of Vrindavan. These are some of the, few of the many points that Krishna wanted to make and to bring about this wonderful Leela. But the main thing is to, sh to show that, that the residents of Vrindavan, they know nothing about Krishna, uh, nothing but Krishna. So they make Krishna their life and soul. So they're teaching us through this pastime that uh, Krishna Matta, Krishna Pitta, Krishna Dana Prana. <laughs> And Krishna is everything. Okay, so uh, I'll stop there. You want to play that? Now this is a little... Uh, it's coming from the... It's called Dakola, Champu. It's coming from Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu. And the devotees in Hungary... Uh, performed this pastime and recorded this. And this is glorifying Krishna by calling out to Krishna, who is this person who killed Kamsa, killed Jibomasura, Bakasura, Palambasura, like that. So you might find this quite nice. It's only about, it's, it's less than three minutes. Can we get the audio on it too? I hope. So the men, the women sing the first part, the men respond, and then they switch, and then the men. So it's quite nice. This was done, yeah, I was actually personally present for this. No, this was in New Rajadam. As we circumambulated the, the hill, we sang this song. But later it was recorded by the devotees. From Jiva Goswami Gopal Champu. And so it's actually just verses that was put into a song type presentation. Um, there's the words, Giri Puyena Vihitakena, it's the first half. And then you'll see after that, Giri Puyena Vihitakena means who is this person who. Trinavartatana Dalanamayena. Okay, can we keep that up and play the play the video play the
How do you all? <laughs> Very joyful. <laughs> who is that person? <laughs> and then it goes on, who killed? And then obviously it's Giriraj or, or Krishna. Okay, so thank you very much. Govardhan Dadi Ki. Govardhan Puja Ki. Chila Prabhupad Ki Jai. Question, yeah. Oh, okay. I was wondering if Indra is Lord of the Universe, why he got so upset because some small Indian village is not mm. giving him his. Well, out of population. all the Anarthas, the one that somehow or other is very hard to get rid of is pride. <laughs> He's proud of his position. He has power, he has opulence, influence, so many things. King of heaven. He's probably one of the most powerful persons. At least he's in the position of most powerful within the with this particular universe. So, so he gets proud. And the, and the devas are sakambhavatas. They're not they're what they call akambas. They're devotees who still have material desire. It may be a small material desire, the desire to become a deva, <laughs> or a desire for a better material position, but still they serve the Lord. But they have, but they're, they're not pure devotees generally. So, and that was brought out in the pastime of Vritasura you know, when Indra was fighting against Vritasura. So yeah, that. Their tendency is, and this is true in anywhere, both in the spiritual circles and in the material circles, that people who have position, power, influence, learning, abilities, good uh, abilities to control others, tendency is to become proud. But Indra is really proud. <laughs> so there's no one to check him, but Krishna is there too. So it's pride. That's all it is, is pride. Pride and just like he's getting worshipped, not only by the cowherd residents of Vrindavan, but so many living entities are worshipping Indra. So he's getting regular worship. Now, someone refuses to worship. So what does he think? Who is that? Everybody understands I'm supposed to get worshipped. And this person doesn't. And sometimes, you know, just like if you're used to getting praise or honor or respect and then somebody doesn't do it, they say, hmm, I think he had a bad day today or something. He doesn't know my position. <laughs> so it's easy. You know, what do you say? When one has some ability, some accomplishments, some position, power, to think that this is due to my, you know, efforts. But Krishna can change everything in a second. He can take everything away. And this is what he did to Indra. He did it in a very interesting way because he wanted to show so many different points, not only that, but the, but the importance of worshiping Govardhan. But one of the main things was to smash the pride of the demigods, or the, at least Indra. And he did it quite thoroughly. <laughs> so yeah, this pride is very subtle. Sometimes they say it, even a pauper is proud of his penny. <laughs> he doesn't have much, but whatever he has, he's thinking this is my efforts. Mm -hmm. So Krishna consciousness means Eternatapi Sani Chena Tayori Vasa Hishnuna Amani Namanadeina Kirtaniyas and that is the actual emblem or ornament that a devotees work towards in order to practice effective Krishna consciousness. That's why Lord Chaitanya and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's mentioned by Krishna Das Kaviraj. He, he quotes that verse 
And he says, take this verse, string it around your neck and wear it as your ornament. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, so these, this is how a devotee thinks. Devotee doesn't think, well, whatever I've done, it's by my efforts, it's by Krishna's mercy, by the mercy of the devotees. Somehow or other, And uh, the devotee doesn't take credit, but sometimes, and of course many times, the devotee gets the credit. And that's another feature of Krishna's relationship with the devotee. Krishna likes to glorify his devotees. He likes to reciprocate his devotee's service by giving the devotee some, something in exchange. So sometimes Krishna even f fuels the, uh, our possibilities of us getting the proud. <laughs> But that's another feature of his love for his devotee. But the devotee knows it's just Krishna's mercy. So Indra, he's, he's, he's big. He's not a small guy. <laughs> and Indra is a position. It's not simply a, a, a person called Indra. Yeah, every, for every Manvantara, there's a change of Indra's. And so a different personality becomes Indra, like that. But this one, for this particular Manvantara we are in, which is, Ch was it Chakshus? We are in Chakshus? Or no? Huh? Hmm? He, Vaibhishvatamana, yeah, we're in the Vaibhishvatamana. So this particular person who, he's Indra, I don't know his particular name. Parendra, yeah, you're right, yeah, Parendra. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Does that does that help? We like to make sure you digest the first one before you eat the second one. Okay. Huh? I mean, if the universe is so big, at least. The three planetary systems that Indra rules, the whole Bhumandala, I'm sure that there's been times where other places haven't performed Indra Puj. Why would he get a set, such a tiny little spot called Vrindavan? <laughs> they didn't do Indra Puj. I mean, is, is he do so desperate for Indra Puj? <laughs> I mean, we don't have to use philosophical <laughs> speculation on this one. <laughs> and say that maybe because they were so dedicated and so fixed on doing it um, that they had, you know, religiously done it every year, but now this talkative boy came in and spoiled everything. Well, the other thing is Vrindavan is not an ordinary place either. Hmm? Vrindavan is not an ordinary place. I mean, even from the point of view of the number of cows that are there, the, the amount of offering, Ananda Maharaj had said he had 900,000 cows, hmm. which is a good number of cows. <laughs> and, then, and then according to the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the cowherd boys had Arda, Buddha, which means that they had literally hundreds of billions of cows. Yeah. And so was, their, their worship was not an ordinary worship. Yeah, there was a hundred, so many billions of cowherd boys and gopis too <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good I mean we could we could accept that <laughs> at least I could as a you know a logical understanding of why Indra became upset particularly okay so thank you you had another question okay um, so when he established the offering of tulsi leaves, um, before that was it also present or it was complete? Yeah, they just had forgotten. <laughs> it's not like it became a form of worship at the time. They just, after offering so much, yeah, that's the way it appears in this pastime, that nobody remembered to offer tulsi that's what it seems like. And then Ron Brahman said, give him a Tulsi. <laughs> I 
I think Krishna, in the form of the hill, wanted to show that this is how you should wear, should offer boga. And so he was waiting for that. And there's a village right around mm, the hill there. It's called Aniyur. There's a village in Govardhan. It's called Aniyur. It's up there? <laughs> okay. And of course, we have go we have Radhakund and Shamakund like that. And Govardhan is shaped in a form of a peacock, right? Like that. So uh, we could speak more, but I think there's many more activities to go on today, so so we'll stop here and have time for Dhammadarasakam, then Archi, then there's fasting. Then there's fasting, right? And then we're going to have a virtual feast. You're going to see the feast on the computer, and that's all. <laughs> what do you think, Parmananda? <laughs> virtual feast. Okay, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.